Hello friends. Today we gonna learn about the strangler pattern. So meet Bob. Bob is a product architect at a e-commerce company. So right now at his company everything is going great. The company is making lot amount of money and everyone is very happy. So on one fine day Sasha comes to meet Bob. Now Sasha is the head of product for the company and she tells Bob that the company has decided to migrate the existing monolithic e-commerce application to a set of microservices. Bob feels surprised by this decision. What's the need for this? he asks. And then Sasha starts listing him the benefits of moving from a monolithic application to microservices. For example, she says that it will help us upscale and downscale our services according to the traffic. so we'll be paying only for the resources that we are actually using she also mentioned that it will help us achieve things like continuous integration and continuous delivery and mentioned that we'll be making our system more resilient and making handle the faults more gracefully and then before leaving she hands over bob the task of creating a plan as to how we would be migrating our system to a set of microservices now bob is taken aback with this he's wondering what kind of strategy should i plan to achieve this migration he is also wondering about the cons of this migration what if the overall performance of the system goes down which could lead to a even bigger problem like the sale of the company going down which could cascade to you know overall revenue going down So the solution to Bob's problem is to pursue this migration in a phase wise approach which is what the strangler pattern is all about. So the strangler pattern says that instead of migrating all functionalities to microservices in one go you take out the least critical functionality and you migrate it to a separate microservice in a first phase. And this way in a iterative approach phase by phase you keep on taking out functionalities depending upon the decreasing order of their criticality and you continue to migrate them into microservices suppose for example in our e-commerce product we have the customer functionality product functionality order functionality and payment functionality so this is the initial phase now in phase 1 when we start our migration we only migrate the customer into a separate microservice the remaining functionalities for example product order payment remain part of the existing application as it is so the existing application if it wants to communicate with the customer functionality will have to make a rest call over a network to do so so after this migration there might have been some defects so after fixing those defects and after letting the system run for a while when we are confident that the system has significantly stabilized then we move to phase 2 so in phase 2 also we do the same thing now we take out the second least critical functionality for example the product functionality into a separate microservice now there are only order and payment remaining in the existing application now we again repeat the same thing we allow the system to run for a while and fix some defects that might have come in this duration and then we move to phase 3 now in phase 3 there were only two functionalities to be migrated to microservices which were order and payment so we create two new microservices and now the system has been completely migrated from a monolithic system to a microservices system so the advantage of this pattern is you know it is safe and easy to implement and the disadvantage of this pattern is that it takes time to implement this and it is you know complex and to manage test and debug while implementing and the use case for this pattern is whenever we are thinking of monolithic to microservices migration and when we are thinking about moving a system to cloud So friends I hope you would have liked this video. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and we thank you for watching this video.